So it's time to go over the huge amount of stats tweaks from the spring patch. In this video I'm just going to cover the more global changes to most of the weapon groups and the tweaks to attachments, which is going to make you think twice about choosing the right loadout for certain weapons and for whatever reason, it was mentioned in the official patch notes that most attachments, especially the underbell grips, have a new spread decrease multiplied that will affect your spread decrease in a negative way. That's a pretty important change that really should have been mentioned at least somewhere in the patch notes. But anyway, let's first talk about spread decrease. This stat basically means how quickly your spread will reset once you stop firing your weapon. This stat factors into accuracy when burst firing. For example, the spread decrease on assault rifles used to be 15 across the board, which enabled us to easily pull off some nice controlled burst fire while still keeping good accuracy at range, even on weapons that are designed for close range. Since the spring patch, this aspect about gunplay isn't going to work exactly the same as how it previously did. The spread decrease has been lowered on pretty much every weapon and even on our favourite attachments. Generally speaking, weapons that are designed for close range have had their spread decrease lowered more, while weapons that are designed for medium to long range haven't been affected by this as much. In fact, some weapons that are designed for long range have actually had their spread decrease raised so spread will reset quicker. To give you guys some examples, the AEK Assault Rifle had a spread decrease stat of 15. After the spring patch, it's down to 7.7. .7. The ACWR Carbine went from 15 to 8, which are fairly big reductions. Weapons like the Scar H went from 15 to 9.2, and like I said, guns that are designed for long range, like the RPK-12 LMG, has actually been improved. Its spread decrease has gone from 15 to 17.3. So by this, we can get a good idea what spread values will be for each weapon. Remember, the faster the weapon can take at our target, the more of a spread decrease nerf it got, and the longer it takes for a weapon to take at your target, they haven't been affected by this as much. And in some cases, certain weapons have even had spread decrease buffs. You might be wondering though, what's the point of all this? Dice are trying to keep weapons more suited to what they're actually designed for basically defining their intended roles more than how it was before, keeping close range weapons for close range, long range weapons for long range. Also another point is this change gives a really good incentive to the player to use long range weapons seen as their spread decrease has actually been improved. So you may want to actually consider pulling out the SAR-21 Assault Rifle or the RPK-12 LMG. And same on topic with spread decrease nerves, underbarrel grips will affect your spread decrease as well like I said before. The angle grip, ergo grip and the stubby grip have a new spread decrease multiplier of 0.66, so that means a 34% reduction to how quickly your spread will reset. So if we use the AEK as an example, with its already reduced spread decrease of 7.7, .7, if you attach the angled grip it becomes 5.08. To top this off, this flash high the barrel attachment also has a spread decrease multiplier of 0.83 or 17% which is the exact attachment setup I previously used quite often on the AEK. In fact, I put the flash hider and the underbarrel grip on a lot of weapons, so basically if you have the angled grip and the flash hider on weapons like the AEK, this setup is really going to reduce how quickly your spread can reset by a lot, which like I said, you may want to rethink your attachment setup. Apart from the spread decrease nerfs, pretty much all attachments have had additional tweaks. Some got improvements while others lost some of their benefits. The angle grip got another pretty hefty nerf to the amount of recoil it will reduce on your first shot. It went from 0.67 or 33% to 0.8 or in other words 20%. So it kind of begs the question, is this attachment worth adding to your weapon anymore? Yeah, I know 20% is still some kind of reduction and will help deal with some close range weapons that have a really high first shot multiplier, but combine this with a spread decrease nerf, I'm kind of sorry to say, but I think that's it for me. I really can't see myself using this attachment anymore. The laser sight got a buff, it further improves shooting from the hip, it used to have a multiplier of 0.75, so 25%, and after the spring patch it's 0.67, so a 33% improvement, which is a nice little buff for the laser sight. I imagine this is going to work extremely well on some of the PDWs that have insanely good hipfire accuracy. The compensator and muzzle brake barrel attachments have had one of their negatives removed. They used to increase your max spread by around 30%. After the spring patch, that will not affect your max spread at all. Seeing as they have one less negative, you may want to swap out the flash hider for either one. For me, I don't have any issues with vertical recoil, so I'm seriously considering using the compensator on all my weapons. 
As for the stubby slash potato grip, it also had some tweaks. Like I said before, it got the spread decrease nerf, and it also got a buff to how much it reduces spread increase per shot. Its multiplier went from 0.85 or 15% to 0.80 to make it a 20% reduction to spread increase per shot which is a nice little increase to help reduce how much spread accumulates when you're shooting. It seems like DICE did this so the stubby grip stays somewhat desirable to players. The ergo slash vertical grip didn't get any tweaks apart from the spread decrease nerf like I mentioned before. And that's about it for attachments. Like I said, you may want to reconsider your weapon setups if you find that your bullets are kind of going all over the place. More often than previously when burst firing, you may want to take off the underbarrel grip and flash hide if you're using it. Next up, let's talk about weapon damage tweaks. Assault rifles and LMGs that have a max damage stat of 24 have been increased, believe it or not, to 24.5, which honestly, I can't remember exactly what the reason was behind this. Even with the new headshot multiplied, its previous damage of 24 still enabled you to pull off the double headshots to take out your target in close range. So I'm not too sure why it's 24.5 now. Assault Rifles and LMGs that have a bigger damage mod like the Bulldog and M240B have had their minimum damage decrease from 24 to 21.6, which don't worry too much, that still makes them a 5 bullet to kill at range. However, this might sound like only a small reduction, but the main reason why their minimum damage was decreased was due to the higher headshot multiplier. If you guys remember a long time ago in the early days of Battlefield 4, the higher damage model assault rifles and LMGs had the amazing ability to take out a target at range with two headshots. That ability was removed a long time ago, which I do disagree with, but that's another topic of discussion. And speaking of headshots, the new headshot multiplier has been increased from 2.0 to 2.13. Though I do believe this new multiplier has only been implemented for assault rifles, LMGs, carbines and PDWs. So out of these weapon groups, if any gun does 24 upfront damage, it will be able to kill your target in close range with two headshots, which raises the skill cap when it comes to gunplay. Obviously this will reward accuracy, and I'm all for that, so I'm pretty happy about this tweak. Carbines didn't get any kind of global damage tweaks, though some carbines did get some fairly major tweaks, but I'm not going to cover this in this video, I'll leave that for my biggest nerfs and buffs video later in the week. PDWs have had probably the most tweaks out of each weapon group. Pretty much each one has seen tweaks of recall, spread increase, and stats in that nature. But sticking to the more global changes, for this weapon group, most PDWs like the JS2 and the CBJMS, their damage drop has been extended, almost double in some cases. I'll leave a few examples on screen here, but extending the distance to when the damage starts to drop off makes PDWs more viable in close range. As for a global change to every PDW, their max spread has been reduced to 1.3 from 1.5, which is a fairly interesting but necessary tweak to make PDWs more appealing and viable. Basically this means PDWs will have improved accuracy, especially to those people that tend to just hold down the trigger. Also, some PDWs had damaged tweaks. I'll leave a few examples on screen here. The most interesting one is the MPX. It lost its totally unique upfront damage of 26, which meant it was a 4 bullet to kill in close range, regardless of what body part your bullets landed on target, which is a shame to see it go, but it did get a mag increase. So let's talk about shotguns. There's been so many tweaks to this weapon group, it's impossible to mention all in one video. But to summarize, shotguns are more consistent with spread deviation. As you can see here from this video I did a couple of weeks ago, we can see the spread is much tighter. Also, every shotgun has had their damage drop extended by quite a lot. So basically, they'll do more damage at a further distance. So if previously you never had a go at using shotguns or you really just didn't like them, it's a really good time to start using them. Let's talk about DMRs. A lot of people thought they got left out in the spring patch. That's actually totally wrong. Each DMR got various tweaks to recoil and things like that. But as for a global change, every DMR had their first shot multiplier massively lowered. In fact, they're all at 1.0. To give you guys some examples, the Ace 53 SV went from 2.1 to 1.0. The SKS went from 2.0 to 1.0. Much like the PDWs, this change should make DMRs more appealing to players and viable for their intended role. So hopefully you've made it to the end of the video and have actually learned something. It's taken me quite a while to digest all the weapon tweaks and put it all in the overview format, so I do apologise for the video being so delayed. Like I said, my next video I'll be going over the biggest weapon buffs and nerfs from the spring patch. 
That's where I'll be focusing on a select amount of guns. But anyway, let me know your thoughts about the global stat changes I've talked about in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.